Well, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for our lunchtime devotional. This is Pastor Jamie, and we're so glad that you could tune in with us today. We're here every day, Monday through Friday at 1230, live on our Spreaker app. Uh, If you're following us on Spreaker, leave a comment there in the chat section. Let me know that you're tuning in, or to leave a prayer request, you can do the same thing. If you follow the my uh, share from Facebook, whether it popped up on our church page or my personal page, and you follow through there, you can leave your prayer request or your comments on that app as well. So we're so glad to be with you today and to come as we continue our study on the fruit of the Spirit. This is episode six. We did it Monday through Friday last week. This is our second week as we continue this study. So once again, thank you for joining us, and we're so glad for the opportunity to be able to share the Word of God here on this platform, and just trying to keep people encouraged during these uncertain times that we're in, and pray that those that have been listening, that it has been a strength to you. Maybe you're new to the broadcast, and it's your first time tuning in. You can follow the Spreaker app to Daily Devotionals, uh, there for Middleburg Church of God, Daily Devotionals, And up underneath that podcast link, you will find the first five episodes and you can get called up and bring you up to where we are today. Today, we're going to talk about long suffering or better known as patience. So we're going to talk today about the fruit of the spirit or the result of his presence within us is long suffering. I may say long suffering some of the time and I may say patience some of the time. Both are science. Simultaneous, however you say that word, they are linked together as the same. So Galatians 5, 22, 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Remember, we're talking, when we look at this, we're not thinking of grapes and apples and oranges when we think of fruit. We're not thinking of the fruit of the bloom. We're thinking of the fruit of the womb. So it's the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and put the seed of Jesus inside of her. He came forth with all of these uh, these uh, fruits, just this, this fruit, excuse me, that we're talking about. Each one of these things were exhibited in the life of Christ. And just as that happened in our second birth, the Holy Ghost overshadowed us and what was put inside of us was his presence. So the result of his presence within us, this today we're talking about the result of his presence within us is long suffering. So let's get right into the study today. The circumstances of life should never cause us to lose our patience, our long suffering. Never should that happen. All of us experience impatience. All of us have experienced the consequences of our impatience. And all of us can benefit from becoming more long-suffering. How do we do that? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. So the purpose of this devotional, this study today, is to help us to understand and demonstrate God's long-suffering. So we have to identify the current issue of where we stand. We all, we've all known moments of impatience. It's often a feeling of mounting tensions and pressures, the feeling that we're going to blow at any minute. Well, there's a story shared by John Huffman Jr. It's a kind of a humorous story, but it really hits the mark of what I'm talking about today. It's a young father in a supermarket who was pushing a shopping cart with his little son who was strapped there in the front. And the little boy was fussing and irritable and crying. The other shoppers gave him long stares. We've all been there. As the child would pull cans off the shelf, the father would seem to be very calm as he continued to push the cart and was murmuring gently, easy now, Don. Donald. Keep calm, Donald. Steady, boy. It's all right, Donald. A mother who was passing by was greatly impressed by this young father's calm attitude, and she said, certainly, uh, you, you certainly know how to talk to an upset child quietly and gently. And then bend, bending down to the little boy, she said, what seems to be the trouble, Donald? Oh, no, said the father. He's Henry. I'm Donald. Uh, So we've all been there. We understand that uh, we have to calm ourselves uh, and uh, understand that that's what God wants to do. Uh, The the purpose and the result of his spirit within us is going to bring about this 
part of the fruit of the Spirit, which is long-suffering. He wants us to make us as long-suffering as He is. The amazing truth is that God wants to make us just as long-suffering as He is. He provides His own Spirit to impart His patience to us. God's patience is long-tempered or slow to anger with both believers and unbelievers. Exodus 34, 5 and 7, we read, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And then over in the New Testament, First Timothy chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, he said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ may show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Uh, so not only does God want us to be uh, uh, just like him uh, and to make us as long-suffering as he is, uh, he wants to make you long-suffering with him as well. Uh, and God wants to do that. Our impatience towards him uh, really reveals a basic lack of our trust that he knows what he's doing. I say this all the time uh, and it's worth reiterating today. He's either God God of all or he's not God at all. You either trust him with everything or you trust him with nothing. God is reminding us over and over and over again, I've got this. Trust me. So we have to put that trust in him. But in our impatience towards God, waiting upon God, maybe you've prayed and you're waiting for an answer and you're getting impatience with that. Well, that shows our lack of trust in him when we do that. So we think if he would just do do things my way, it'd be all right. Maybe we think that sometimes. I don't know. Psalms 41 through 3, we read, I waited patiently for the Lord. And when I did that, the psalmist said, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit of a, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock. And he took there and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. So we must admit that we don't know what God is doing, but that we trust Trust the Holy Ghost to reassure us of God's wisdom and His love. I, I said it last night in my message. God, I don't know what you're doing, but do it in me. That must be our desire. We must admit that. I don't know what God is doing. I don't know what God is up to, but I guarantee you it's all good. He is faithful as promised. He's working it together for our good. And so just trust that the Holy Ghost will give you that a reassurance every day of God's wisdom and His love, that you'll have that patience uh, to trust God. God wants to not only do that, but He wants to make you long-suffering with other people. How many needs that? Uh, it helps to remember that we need to be as patient with people uh, as we want them to be with us, or even better, uh, as we want God to to be with us, uh, understanding that we uh, are all a work in progress. I remember in uh, elementary school, I believe it was uh, first or second grade, my teacher's name was Miss Carr. This was public school now, and uh, she shared a little song with us, uh, and that little song was, He's Still Working on Me. Uh, and a verse of that song goes something like this, it's been many years, but I, I still remember the words. It says, there really ought to be a sign upon my heart 
Don't judge me yet. There's an unfinished part. And so how loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. I think we all need that sign hanging around our necks. Hold on. He's not finished with me yet. There's an unfinished part in me. So remember that. There's an unfinished part in me. There's an unfinished part in you. There's an unfinished part in those that we come in contact with every day. So what we must remember to be long-suffering with others. And if we have a hard time with that, remember how patient God was and is with us. Oh, we need to grasp that truth today. And then finally, we realize that God is wanting to us to, to make us, uh, He wants to make us long-suffering with our circumstances. Now, circumstances are, of life are are hard. They're, 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 they weigh upon our hearts, our minds, uh, our intellect, everything, our emotions. Man, uh, circumstances can really get you down. Circumstances uh, can can destroy a person if we allow them to. Uh, they, but they should not do that. The circumstances of life should not cause us to lose our patience. Uh, we need to, some people say, well, you need to just pause, take a deep breath, uh, count to 10, all of those things. I say uh, that we need to let the result of his presence within us shine forth. Remember, if you walk in the flesh, uh, you're not going to be able to fulfill the works of the spirit. Uh, but if you walk in the spirit, you will not edify the flesh. So just simply walk in the spirit. Let the spirit live in you and through you, abiding in you and abounding through you. So the Old Testament prophets, they were early disciples and the early disciples and Christ all exemplify the patience God wants us to have in our circumstances. So we'll close with these verses. Uh, speaking of that, in James chapter 5, verses 10 and 11, it says, Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job? And have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and tender mercy, uh, and of tender mercy. So if you allow him to do it, uh, the Holy Ghost today can reshape your character faults into manifestations uh, of the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, all allow the Holy Ghost to, to just come down today uh, and let you realize uh, that God wants to make us uh, in his likeness, and his image. So we have to realize that we all have moments of image patience, but know that through that, God wants to make us long-suffering as He is. God wants to make us long-suffering with Him. God wants to make us long-suffering with others. And God wants to make us long-suffering with our circumstances. Not only do we have those great examples and the prophets and the disciples and even Christ Himself when He put on this house of flesh, but we have the presence, His presence, working with within us, living in us. We've been born again of an incorruptible seed. So I just want to remind you today that the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. The result of His presence within us is going to bring forth long-suffering. So I'm thankful for that today, aren't you? So let's pray today as we go. Uh, what a wonderful day to start off our Monday to say, I need to have some patience this week. I don't know what this week's going to hold for us. I, I don't know what's coming uh, down the pike, but I know that if I'll let the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within me, bring forth this patience, this long-suffering, I will be all right, and so will you. Father, we're thankful today for the Word of God. We're thankful for this reminder today that Your desire for us is long-suffering. Uh, the result of Your presence within us will be long-suffering. I pray, God, that we'll walk in it, live in it, uh, abide and abound in it, trusting you, delighting in you, depending upon you in all things. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Join us back here again tomorrow for our lunchtime devotional at 1230. Uh, invite, share, do whatever you can to get others on this broadcast. We'd love to be able to be an encouragement to others just in hoping uh, that we're being an encouragement to you daily and that you'll want to share it with somebody else. 
us. We love you. God bless you and have a wonderful Monday afternoon.